Welcome again. Who can be saved? Right now in our readings, we are at Luke chapter 18, verses 26 through 29. Now, this is a very good question, and we need to really understand here what Jesus is teaching here. And, uh, and, uh, and I mean, it may go against what you have been taught in church. It may go against what you've heard on the radio or on television or on the internet and other places. But you need to be humble enough to, uh, to challenge everything you've heard and to search the scriptures for yourself. Let's get into this. Let's read this. This is Luke chapter 18, verse 26. Those who heard it said, who then can be saved? So let me stop here for a second. We just came from a passage of scripture where Jesus made it sound very difficult to get saved. He told a rich man that he must obey the commandments and he must go over and above that and sell everything he's got and give to the poor in order to actually have eternal life. And so um, he also said that it's very, it's almost pretty much impossible for a rich man to be saved because he said that, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's easier for uh, a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than, than for a rich man to be saved. Now, I know there's rumors out there that the eye of the needle or the needle's eye is actually not literally a needle in an eye. Uh, the eye of a needle, although it could have been, uh, could have been that that's what Jesus was talking about. But they say that the needle's eye was actually a gate, a very, very small gate in, uh, in the temple. It was so small that a camel, you can barely squeeze a camel through there. You'd have to take all the luggage off the camel in order to get the camel through there. Nevertheless, uh, if that's the case, uh, you have to strip yourself of everything. You got to strip yourself of all that you have to get into the kingdom of heaven. They asked Jesus, who then can be saved? Jesus answered in verse 27, but he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Peter said, look, we have left everything and followed you. He said to them, most certainly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for God's kingdom's sake who will not receive many times more in this time. In this time, which means in this age. In this life and in the world to come, eternal life. Wow, what an awesome, what an awesome challenge and what an awesome, uh, I mean, Jesus really, really just basically strips everything from a person here, right? From uh, the uh, teaching before that we were talking about, um, the rich man, right into this, where Jesus is saying, not only, not only do you have to obey the commandments, but you have to sell all, give to the poor, and you have to basically strip yourself of everything. Strip yourself of, don't worry about your, I mean, that's dying to self. A dead man doesn't have anything. God, God demands death to self, okay? I'm not talking about suicide in the biological sense, okay? I'm talking about completely denying your desires, completely being humble with settling for less. Instead of going for the great, the biggest, greatest television in the, in the store, you, you settle for maybe even no TV, okay? Instead of going for the greatest, biggest, most expensive car, new car on the market, well, maybe you just go for some old rugged beater, you know, that can just barely run, you know, or maybe even no car at all. Okay, it's about denying yourself. It's about not, not following your own lust, desires. It's about dying and um, stripping yourself of everything, all of, all of your possessions, even your friends, your family, if need be, even your own, your, even your own reputation couldn't mean quitting your job. Whatever it takes, Jesus said, "You will receive many more, many more times of things that you that you've given up for God. You'll receive many times more in this life and in the age to come, in the life to come, eternal life. What a promise! And I'm telling you, and Jesus wasn't just all cushy, cushy, and making it easy for people here. Not at all. 
I encourage you, read, I mean, read the, check out my previous teaching. If not, go back and read the last few paragraphs. Jesus basically strips everything from everybody. Saying you can't, you can't even be worried about it. You can't be attached to anything here in this life. Material things, money, anything. The way you think, the way you feel, it does. It really just doesn't matter. What matters is what the way what God thinks and what God feels. It's about completely surrendering to Jesus, one hundred percent. That means if Jesus says, or if God says anywhere in the Bible, if it's, if God says it's a sin, don't try to justify it. Admit it. Yes, it's a sin, and do everything you can to repent of it. Don't try to justify it. Don't try to make it think like, oh yeah, Jesus would do it, do it too. Oh, Jesus would love me too in this sin. Uh, you know what? Jesus would be rebuking you harshly in that sin. Because after all, that's what love is really all about, right? And we were just talking about that. You know, Leviticus chapter 19, the whole basis of the Torah of loving one another. It says you, will, you should love your neighbor as yourself, but you shall not suffer that person to sin. Don't let your neighbor sin. If you really love your neighbor, you wouldn't let him sin. You wouldn't let her sin. You wouldn't let her do something that, that God's going to be angry about. You would correct that person. You would do everything you can to, to, to pull that person out of that sin. Because you know if that person doesn't get out of that sin, that person will suffer eternal torment. Horrific torment. What can I say? This is a very, very serious thing. And Jesus is very, very serious. He's a, he was a very, very serious man. So we got to be very serious, sober. And we got to do what's right in his sight. A true Christian is someone who follows Jesus, who does what he would do. What would he do? He would live without sin. Oh, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Oh, no, nobody's perfect. Well, nobody's perfect in the eyes of men. I can make spelling mistakes and, you know, you know, maybe I wouldn't assemble a bike properly. That's a sin in the eyes of man. It's being imperfect. But that's not a sin in the eyes of God. God didn't say you should be perfect in the eyes of God. God didn't say, thou shalt not make a spelling error. God doesn't say, thou shalt not assemble a bike improperly. No. You can be perfect in the eyes of God. Yes, you can. And again, I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat myself a million times over. Check out my other uh, uh, teachings about that, about righteousness. Uh, don't forget to go to my blog, ChristopherEnoch.org. Don't forget that, and check out some of the stuff we got on there. The teachings on there it would bless you. So as you go and as you think and as you really meditate and do more than meditate, do more than just think and read about this stuff. May God give you the eyes to see, the mind to understand it, and the ability to do it, and the unction to do it. It's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, my dear friend, my dear brother, my dear sister. It's all about obedience. May God show his love to you in this, that he rebuke you of your sin, show you your sin, lead you to repentance, and give you the power to repent in the name of Jesus. Amen.